have the great pleasure and privilege to now introduce our next guest, Stuart Holm, uh, and his manifesto, Art Strike Biennial. When Stuart Holm was 16, he held down a factory job for a few months, an experience that led him to vow that he'd never work again. After doubling in rock journalism as well as music, he switched his attention to the art world in the early 80s. Stuart Holm now writes novels as well as cultural commentary, and he continues to make films and exhibition. He is currently editing a book series, actually it's called Seminar, it's an experimental fiction series uh, at Bookworks, and he also is performing as a ventriloquist. Um, his 12th novel, Memphis Underground, was published in 2007, and he's working now on the follow-up book called Blood Rights of the Bourgeoisie, which will be out in 2010. Um, Stuart was also one of the main authors of our exhibition of British art we uh, did about 10, 11 years ago at the Musée d'Art Moderne de la Ville de Paris called Live Live, which focused a lot on temporary autonomous zones, artist-run spaces, and self-organization. A very warm welcome to Stuart Holm. Hi, thanks. I need an assistant for this piece because I didn't want to give a straight um, presentation of what I'm doing. Uh, we'll get to that in a while, but um, I'd like, you to, like to introduce you to my uh, assistant, Mr. Dog. G'day. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's all right for family viewing, but we might as well explain how I met Mr. Dog. Can you tell me, Mr. Dog? Uh, yeah, you are uh, in Australia, in Northern, and you are sort of a volunteer from the audience, and uh, I got up on stage, and you uh, stuck your hand up in the arse, and after a while I said, uh, hey, take your hand out, your ring's hurting me. And I said, that's not my ring, that's my wristwatch. But uh, anyway, we're not going to do anything like that today. Uh, what I want to do is rather than, I wrote this Art Strike Biennial uh, Manifesto. We've got Gustav Metzger down here who proposed an art strike between 1977 and 1980 and 1974. Um, I proposed an art strike between uh, 1990 and 1993, which was rather different. And there's currently a group of uh, people kind of working on the border between culture and politics in uh, Eastern Europe, particularly a guy called uh, Radus Derzis, in, uh, who's based in Elitis in Lithuania, working on an art strike biennial. This is partly to oppose uh, Vilnius being cultural cap European city of culture next year, um, jointly with Linz in Austria, and um, for various other reasons. So he wanted me to kind of go back to the art strike and write a manifesto for the art strike biennial. And I thought, well, I can combine that with the uh, manifesto marathon. Uh, but then I thought, does it make sense coming to the Serpentine and presenting an art strike manifesto? And I thought, probably not. Uh, so what I thought I'd do was I'd stick the manifesto online and kind of revive an old performance piece I used to do. Uh, which was where, back in the mid-80s, I used to do things like uh, have two people get, have an argument using a single phrase. So I thought that uh, you just have to repeat the same phrase back and forth and see who could win the argument. And I thought uh, I could do this with uh, my puppet, Mr. Dog, yes. Um, and uh, basically, I also thought that, you know, we've all read our Bergson, and we're aware of kind of Bergson's influence on the early avant-garde. Very important. He also influenced Sor George Sorel, a much more problematic figure, uh, whose book Reflections on Violence was clearly a big influence on the Italian futurists. So I figured that uh, not looking at um, Bergson's notions of vitalism, which I have some problems with, uh, but going to his book on humor, we, we all remember that the uh, famous conclusion Bergson reached in his book on humor, that uh, repetition was the basis of all humor. So if I'm just repeating back and forth the URL for the manifesto, um, you know, it, should, it won't be very funny to start with, but after about 20 minutes, you'll be rolling in the aisles. That's if Bergson's correct, and that's if I can keep it up for 20 minutes, of course. If you're lucky, I can't. Uh, but anyway, I better ask my puppet if he's... Uh, sorry, puppet. Mr. Dog, you're not a puppet. Oh, I don't think you have a hand in anything I do. Um, anyway, sorry, I haven't been doing the ventriloquism for a while. Um, I'll ask him if he's ready. Are you ready, Mr. Dog? No, I'm not ready. I want you to do a grandfather joke. I can't do a grandfather joke, Mr. Dog. Um, this is a family audience. Those, those jokes are filthy. Well, I'll do a joke before you uh, do, do this for horns. Well, okay. How many artists does it take to change a light bulb? 
I don't know. It takes ten, one to change it and the other nine to stand around telling him it looks good and reassuring him it's okay the way he's done it. Uh, yeah, this reminds me of another artist joke. Um, an artist went to his dealer and said, uh, you know, hey, how am I doing? And the dealer said, well, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is a guy came in here and asked if the value of your paintings would go up after you died. And I said, yes. So he bought 15. The bad news is he's your doctor. So I guess uh, we're about ready to repeat the URL, which won't go on for 20 minutes, honestly, even though I've claimed on my uh, web page it will. So um, are you ready, Mr. Doc? Yeah, I'm ready. Um, OK, so it's www.stuartholmesociety.org slash art slash shit dot htm. www.org stuartholmesociety... Oh, I got that wrong. www.stuartholmesociety.org slash art slash shit dot htm. www stuartholmesociety.org slash art slash shit dot htm www.stuartholmesociety.org slash art slash shit dot htm www.stuartholmesociety.org slash art slash shit dot htm www.stuartholmesociety.org slash art slash shit dot htm Oh, I think I've had enough of this, actually. You probably have too. You're not laughing either. You should be by now. Fucking hell. Okay, thanks. Bye. G'day, all.